Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guest this week is Dr. Rana Gupta, a distinguished professor of medicine and cell biology. Dr. Gupta is also a member of the Duke Molecular Physiology Institute. Today we'll talk about fat cells as a dynamic endocrine organ, as well as a new understanding of how to treat obesity and diabetes at the molecular level. Before we talk to Dr. Gupta, I'd like to share a few updates. Earlier this month, Dr. Gregory Kogan and his team have developed a brain-computer interface that might one day help people who are un unable to speak due to neurological disorders. Published in the journal Nature Communications, their study demonstrated how a new device that decodes brain signals was able to predict what sounds someone is trying to say. As a powerful example of one Duke in action, neuroscientists, neurosurgeons, and biomedical engineers all collaborate in this research. While early, these findings are a significant step in being able to restore speech for patients who have lost their ability to communicate because of a debilitating motor disorder like ALS. Our faculty continue to do amazing work. And congratulations to Rashid Gabatajisan and Dr. Andrew Langstrom, who are among the 25 physician scientists nationwide who have received the Paragon Award for Research Excellence from the Doris Duke Foundation. The Paragon Award celebrates physician scientists who have advanced the knowledge of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of human disease, ultimately improving health outcomes of their patients. This honor is extremely well deserved. I would also like to shine a light on the faculty alumni who received Medical Alumni Awards during last weekend's Medical Alumni Weekend. I'm proud to note that five award recipients are Duke School of Medicine faculty, and four of them were also my fellow alums. Videos of the 2023 Medical Alumni Award winners are on the School of Medicine YouTube channel, or you can follow the link on the screen. And congratulations to all the recipients. I strongly encourage everyone in the Duke Health community to be up to date with COVID vaccinations, including the updated COVID vaccine that was released in September. The updated vaccine provides greater protection against the most commonly circulating variants. Also note that testing for COVID regularly is an important tool in minimizing the spread of infection. Be aware that several manufacturers have extended the expiration dates for home COVID test kits, and you can confirm the expiration date of any kits you own by visiting the website on the screen. And of course, masking remains strongly encouraged through all clinical areas at Duke. Now, please sit in on my conversation with Dr. Rana Gupta. Rana, thanks so much for joining me today. I was thrilled to have participated in your recruitment now over a year ago. So you've had a long-standing interest in the intersection between fat cells and diabetes. Why have you been studying that? Yeah, thanks, Mary. Um, unfortunately, I have a long family history of diabetes. Um, it runs rampant in our family. And um, so ever since uh, I started grad school, I was very interested in learning more about this disease in particular. And, but I also have a passion for developmental biology and stem cell biology. And mm -hmm. I was able to merge these interests uh, by studying fat tissue biology, how fat tissue develops and expands uh, in the development of obesity and how that connects to diabetes. So tell me a little bit about what you're finding. Yeah, so what's remarkable about fat tissue is that it's not just an inner uh, connective tissue like we thought for over 100 years. It's really a dynamic endocrine organ and it functions not only to store excess energy and serve as an energy bank, but it talks, it communicates to the rest of the body uh, through the production of hormones and peptides, like other endocrine organs. And through this ability to talk and communicate, it really regulates so many different aspects of physiology. And um, unfortunately, what, what goes wrong in the condition of obesity is that the fat tissue loses its ability to talk correctly or properly. So what we're trying to understand is uh, we're trying to listen actually to fat tissue and understand what it's saying under normal conditions, uh, but also what's going wrong that's leading to the development of diabetes. By the way, I remember your seminar when you were being recruited and it was awesome. So Thank you. You, uh, you have a very good way of explaining for pretty complex concepts. So there's this discussion about fat that's brown or white. What's the difference? Yeah, so um, all of us have two different types or classes of adipose tissue or fat tissue. Um, I mentioned the energy storing white adipose tissue that serves as an energy bank. Mm -hmm. But we also have uh, a second type of fat tissue called brown fat tissue. And we have a little bit of it as adults, but it's there and it's functional. And it, it functions to actually convert excess energy into heat. So it produces heat actually from your excess energy. And um, because of that, it can actually promote um, energy expenditure, burning of energy. 
And we think that by activating that or making more of it, we can actually promote weight loss mm. or, and improve, or improve metabolic health. Um, so what we're trying to understand really is, can we kind of uh, convert that white fat into brown fat using developmental biology? Uh, it has the natural ability to shape shift into brown fat. Can we tap into that, unlock that ability to convert that energy storing fat, energy bank into an energy furnace? And the other area you're looking at is the intersection between inflammation and fat. So what is that connection? Absolutely. Um, adipose tissue is actually a very much an immunological organ. Mm. A lot of different types of immune cells take residence in adipose tissue. It's really remarkable. And what happens um, as fat tissue expands uh, in the development of obesity is that it essentially becomes overworked. There's a limit to how much it can, ex it can expand. And as cells die or as tissue becomes stressed, it creates this very highly inflamed environment where lots of immune cells infiltrate. And that inflammation can actually um, help promote uh, diabetes, heart disease, mm. and other conditions that are inflammatory in nature. So November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. What's the message you'd like to give everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so diabetes remains an epidemic in this country. Yeah. Um, and you know, we always thought about it uh, as type 2 diabetes as being related to um, adults and type 1 diabetes being related to children. I think one of the concerning trends is that uh, the rising incidence of diabetes amongst our youth uh, in children and adolescents. And that's very much linked to the rising incidence of obesity in this population, especially coming out of the pandemic. And so I think it remains really important that we understand that connection between obesity and diabetes, um, what triggers um, diabetes in the setting of obesity, but how can we then use our research to basically uh, fight back, use our fat, fat tissue to fight back against diabetes and, and either sever the link between obesity and metabolic disease or um, promote weight loss and prevent obesity altogether. So you mentioned weight loss, and there's this intersection between uh, weight and diabetes. And I can't help but ask you about this new class of drugs, GLP-1 agonists. Ozempic is the one that everybody knows that people are using for diabetes, using for weight loss. Some are approved, some are not. That's right. What is your view, in, particularly in terms of their relevance to diabetes? Absolutely. This is really um, the, the good news that we hope to share this month. That It's been a really exciting time in the uh, diabetes research field. Uh, these new drugs, um, they, they work in a very different way. They're really robust. And um, rather than like most diabetes drugs, they're not just working to either enhance insulin production or uh, insulin action, but they're targeting uh, satiety and hunger pathways that's helping prevent or, uh, obesity or at least trigger weight loss, which is the underlying uh, contributor to the development of the disease. And this is really a game changer because we yeah. haven't had good uh, weight management um, therapeutics. And so I think there's a lot of promise here um, and there's a lot more uh, surprises to come. We have leading researchers here at the Duke Molecular Physiology Institute that are at the front lines of, of these drugs, uh, studying these drugs. So I think um, we're going to see uh, a lot more improvement in these therapeutics and hopefully uh, they'll uh, begin to uh, take hold in the wider diabetes community. And I, I think it really is a great example of the importance of basic science yeah. because work in this area is 30 plus years old. I don't think anybody, well maybe somebody that was really insightful could have predicted where they would be today. Absolutely, this is a great example of how uh, rigorous and, and patience and basic science can yeah. really uh, pay, pay dividends and it gives us all hope that, um, uh, that we're on the right track to, to, uh, with our research. And that's why we recruited you here. Thank you. So I'm thrilled that you're here. Thanks for what you're establishing here at Duke. And thanks to everybody and have a great weekend.